Have you ever wondered who decides what you are allowed to access? Whether it's entering a building, logging into a system, or joining a network. That's right. It all comes down to access control technologies. These systems are the gatekeepers in both our physical and digital worlds, ensuring that only the right people or devices get into a system. In this session, I will describe the three pillars of access control, physical, logical, and network access control. By the end, you have a practical grip on these concepts and their real-world applications. So let's start with physical access control. The physical access control is the guidance of physical spaces like buildings, campuses, or secure zones. Imagine walking into your college lab late at night. How does the door know to let you in? That's the magic of physical access technologies. First, let's discuss the key cards and badges. The key cards and badges are the small nifty devices that are mostly widely used to grant access. When you tap a card or scan a badge at the door, your identity is verified and cross-checked against all authenticated database. If you're clear, the door unlocks. It's simple, efficient, and it also tracks who entered and when the person entered. Have you ever misplaced your card and had to beg security to let, to let you in? That's how crucial key cards and badges are. The biometric scanners takes us into a world of Skify becoming reality. Instead of relying on a card that someone might steal, biometrics can scan something uniquely you. And that something uniquely you could be your fingerprint, your facial structure, or even iris patterns. Have you ever used your fingerprint to unlock your phone? Imagine the same technology preventing strangers from entering a government office or a data center or from accessing your phone. You've most likely seen security gates and turnstiles whenever you step into a metro station or a concert venue. The security gates and turnstiles control flow allowing one person to go through at a time after their credentials are verified. Think of them as automated gatekeepers, ensuring that no unwelcome guest slips in or gets in unnoticed. Electronic locks are versatile. Unlike traditional locks with one master key, electronic locks can be programmed to grant access to specific users at specific times. For example, your campus janitor might get access to classrooms at night, but students can't. Their flexibility and integration with larger systems make them crucial in today's smart buildings. So in effect, whether it's key cards, whether it's biometrics or secure doors, Physical access control is all about ensuring the real world spaces we enter are safe and secure and that the persons or uh, entities entering are the people who say what they are and they are actually what they say they are. The logical access control is used to control who can access software databases, files, and other digital resources. Whenever you log into your email or whenever you submit a report or read a course material online, a logical access system works behind the scenes. A directory service like Microsoft's Active Directory is at the heart of most logical access systems. Think of it as a giant phone book for your organization where everyone's identity and permissions are stored. Administrators can easily assign roles. For instance, a student might have different file access than a, a professor, while administrators have the highest level of control. 
the directory services helps to centralize access management and keeps identity management efficient and secure. Single sign-on lets you manage your password in one place. How many passwords do you juggle with every day? With single sign-on, you only need one. Once you log into the system, you can access all authorized platforms, whether it's your school's e-learning portal, your cloud tools, or your lab learning systems. It's a win-win. It's convenience for users and it helps strengthen security management. Now let's take it a bit further. Identity and access management platforms, popularly known as IAM platforms, are used to monitor and control who gets access to what. Think of IAM systems as supervisors, ensuring user accounts are valid, ensuring that permissions are correct and that the system is aligned with organizational security policies. For instance, in a company setting, IAM ensures employees in HR don't access confidential tech designs. And also employees in tech designs have no business accessing anybody's HR file. Privileged access management solutions, popularly described as spam tools, are like the bodyguard for most sensitive accounts. These tools protect systems with elevated privileges like an admin account that could shut down the entire network or access classified data. For students planning a career in cybersecurity, mastering spam tools is essential for protecting critical infrastructure. Logical access control is a backbone of a secure, organized digital economy. With directory services, SSO, ZIM, and PAM working in harmony, organizations can fend off unauthorized users and minimize the risk of data breaches. I've discussed the physical spaces and digital identities. Now, let me talk about the network access control. Think about the network access control as highways connecting multiple systems. This brings us to the world of network access control, popularly described as NAC, which verifies and safeguards the devices accessing an organization's network. The firewall is the first layer of defense. Just picture the firewall as a wall of medical fortress, blocking dangerous outsiders while letting in only trusted individuals or data. Whether it's your home Wi-Fi or global enterprise network, firewalls analyze incoming and outgoing traffic to keep attackers away. The virtual private networks are the superhero of remote works. The virtual private networks, popularly described as the VPNs, helps to encrypt traffic, making it unreadable to hackers, even if it is intercepted. Think of VPNs as your private secure tunnels to the internet. If you've ever accessed your campus library or the way you're accessing this course from home, chances are you have used a, a VPN without realizing it. Network segmentation is another critical concept. It helps to divide the network into smaller isolated sections. And the aim is to limit who can access what. For example, in a hospital, the computers controlling critical equipment will be on a different network segment than those used for billing. If one network is compromised, segmentation helps to co contain the damage. So if um, the, the billing system is compromised, then the other critical networks are not compromised at the same time. 
the A2021X authentication is an advanced player in this segment. It helps to ensure that any device trying to join a network, whether it's your laptop or your smartphone or your um, router is authenticated adequately before gaining access. This is especially important in large device environments such as the universities or where hundreds or thousands of devices connect daily. You can Im imagine trying to manage all the devices trying to access the university IT systems. That would be huge because some of us have our um, tablets, our phone, our laptops, our desktops, all accessing the same system. But by providing layering, these tools such as the firewalls, the VPNs, the segmentation and authentication, network access control creates a strong insulated digital environment. So how does all these technologies work together? Now I've discussed the physical, the logical and network access controls. So let's look at how these networks work together. Think about a high security lab. The physical access control will secure the building entrance and lab doors with keys, biometric scans, and electronic logs, thereby ensuring that only authorized students or personnel enters that premise. Then the logical access control will ensure that while researchers or students can experiment on their own computers, they don't get into executive level financial systems. At the same time, privileged tools protect the organization's most sensitive data. Network access control helps to ensure that only authenticated and secure devices join the lab's network and enforces rules to separate sensitive information from general traffic. So using this multi-layered approach and multifaceted approach reduces risk and ensures comprehensive security. But just like every other thing in life, there's also challenges in implementing access control. It's not always a straightforward activity. Balancing security with usability is a common challenge. Students might complain about lengthy authentication processes, or employees might be frustrated if key cards malfunction. Additionally, cost and scalability can impact how well these systems are deployed in large environments. The field of access control is evolving rapidly from AI driven analytics that detects suspicious behavior to IoT-enabled devices like smart locks. The future of access control is smarter and more connected. Imagine one day being identified by the unique pattern of your footsteps. The possibilities are endless. And as the possibilities are growing, so will the challenges grow. If you're a student of security, why should you care about access control? Well, you should because it's your opportunity to make a difference in the world of information or cyber security. Whether you're interested in management, in computer science or networking, skills in access control systems are highly sought after. Start by exploring tools like Active Directory, learning authentication protocols like 802.1x, or experimenting with IAM platforms using free tier subscriptions. Build a foundation to design and troubleshoot systems. They are essential in protecting organizations from security threats. Before I conclude, I want to give you an example of some case studies that you need to visit to help you to improve your knowledge of access controls. Try to find out how PAM systems protect critical infrastructure in energy plants. You can also try to find out how universities use SSO and VPNs to balance accessibility and security. 
Understanding access control could be the stepping stone into your career. As I wrap up, I want you to know that access control is the backbone of security in the physical and digital worlds. Physical tools like key cards and biometric scanners, they get real spaces, while logical systems like IAM platforms protect digital assets. In all, network tools like firewalls and VPNs ensure a secure flow of information. So when they are combined, they minimize vulnerabilities and protect against threats. Security is a growing field and access control is at the heart of field of security. I encourage you to dive into the tools, explore the applications, and don't just study the technology. Think about how you can innovate with it. Stay curious, stay secure, and keep building towards a safe technology future for everybody. That's it from me for now. Thank you for learning me.